Just to introduce um, myself, uh, so I'm an artist, but I'm teaching in two schools in Chicago, which is a huge school, uh, one of the most influenced in the US, and a small school in, in France, in Aix-en-Provence. Um, so two schools have a robotics lab, so that could be strange. But, um, so I will show you quickly what we are doing in this lab. Um, so just a few slides in French, but it's called Mechatronic Lab, so Mechanics and Electronics. And uh, it started 20 years ago. So we invited some people at the beginning, like Rodney Brooks and other artists working in um, uh, mechatronics and electronics, some artists working with biotechnology, and some uh, people interested in animal study, like um, yeah, you can see some of the name here. And we are really focused on open source. So just a few examples of, of really, really old um, projection we made. It's a kind of uh, like a mouse, and it, it's just directed onto the, onto the light. This is a robot that goes up and down, and uh, there is a robotic arm with a um, camera. These are just mechano mechatronics uh, robots. Uh, I will go quick here because it's really old. I will show you from here. Um, so here, we, I, don't, I think everybody knows Arduino, which is a board uh, that you can uh, for prototyping, and uh, so it's open source, or at least it's supposed to be open source. <laughs> uh, so at school, we, we um, developed this uh, project, which is Pinguino. It's exactly the same thing. It, mean, it means that uh, you can program in the same language, but it's totally open source. It's based on the PIC controller and uh, you have uh, everything online so now it's a big community you have different versions so the goal is to um, provide the students some tools that they will be able to keep on uh, using without any problem of write or something not expensive and um, something that you can build uh, in the garage in a way uh, so we show you a few things that we are doing here we try to post uh, some hacking device. For example, here, the, this dog, because I'm using a lot in my work. So you can see here how to hack it. So this is what we can do, hacking, for example. <coughs> so this dog is not the one from Aibo. Uh, from Sony, it's another one, it's uh, from uh, Silverlead, so it hasn't been designed to be reprogrammed, so I really have to open the shell, modify the model, motherboard, and rewrite all the program. Every sensor, every motor, every movement. <coughs> and this is how we had some uh, first radio communication, and then some uh, Wi-Fi to the dog. Uh, other example of hacking toy. So this is a my real baby from the company uh, from Rodney Brooks. And you can see the difference between uh, these mechatronic heads from David Anson that had something between 50 and 60 uh, servo motors, and this one has only one motor. So, toys could be a nice way to see how to make a low-cost version of robotics. Here it's a mechatronic chimpanzee. 
So we just take out the original electronics and then use another peak controller. So this is another example of uh, hacking. We are using the remote because it's something really cheap that has uh, lots of interesting sensors. And uh, what is interesting is all the um, data are treated inside the remote. So you can get all these uh, um, interesting data. But then it's not really uh, adapted to the body. So we just replace the button by other sensor like a capacity voltage sensor and um, vibrator sensor, humidity sensor and so we use uh, these really nice tools to um, um, to make some performance. So here is a kind of workshop we are organizing. For example a funny workshop with a uh, electric fish, so it's fish that emit uh, electricity. Uh, it's not to communicate, it's more like a sonar. So we put some electrode in the fish tank and we were able to communicate with the fish or at least interface the data. For example here, the students made, uh, so this is a device that treated the signal. And here we were able to play pong with the fish. So uh, we were detecting where the fish was in this tube and uh, put this according to the position of the fish. And uh, so the fish of course has a big one and we have a small one because the fish is slow. Uh, and to indicate where the fish, where the ball was going, we were just closing two small wires between the nose and the tail of the fish and it created a kind of uh, short circuit in its magnetic field so the fish does not like that and it tends to go to the opposite direction so it's the way we were trying to play uh, pong with the fish <laughs> some other people were just translating the, the data from the fish into uh, ASCII mode so the fish was sending some email to random addresses <laughs> So this is a game about the predator of the fish and depending on uh, whether the fish was really regular or random, the predator will becoming uh, bigger or smaller. This is another installation from the students who were uh, changing the data from the fish to a singing bird. So it was translated in, into a kind of canary song. It's because of Eduardo Katz's installation. Uh, a long time ago he made an installation using a plant uh, which was communicating remotely to a bird. So it was in reference to this installation. This was a RGB installation. We had three features. So it was a red, green and B in every in each tank. And it was, uh, depending on the activity, uh, you could see this circle uh, changing depending on the red, blue and green activity. The other one made a 3D game for the fish. So the fish had a big screen and he, depending on the way he was uh, uh, moving in the fish tank, he was uh, uh, playing in the game. So this was another workshop about the idea of communicating. Uh, but without word. So we took about this um, um, the uh, persistence of vision. So we decided to build uh, three objects. One it was a frisbee and the other one was a, a hammer. So here it's an Arduino and depending <coughs> on the uh, blinking so you could see the different arrow here, one with just one, one LED and the other one with a uh, row of uh, 10 LED. So this is a sensor made with a piezo. The first test. And then with persistence of vision we were able to send some message uh, uh, here. Okay, 
I think internet is loading. Uh, uh, DIY uh, techniques. So with different open source software, we are using KiCad for example. Here it was with Eagle, but we were showing different versions how to do it. We hack these kind of uh, devices to get ground, but at school we have the big etching device. But this was another example of um, real game uh, with big interface. Uh, so we created this game and to interface where you have to be tender with one interface and really violent with the other one. Um, it was on the idea of the different way you treat a dog. So the dog was walking on the path here and the two opponents were playing with each uh, interface and you have some uh, um, uh, light uh, sensor, uh, um, like tilt sensor with mercury switch, and so you could be really tender, and then the dog will be able to get food, to get pet, and the, on the other side, it was transformed into uh, a really bad experiment with uh, laboratory uh, experiments. <laughs> This were the big interface we are doing. And here, if you want to see, you have all the Pinguino project. So this was the really first version. And now we have a, a 22-bit uh, version. You can download all the PCB and uh, so this is the last version. The idea of the first one, it was to provide something with no SMD component to be able to uh, do it at home. But now, uh, for the 32-bit version, we have to provide the most reliable uh, PCB. So this one is uh, um, provided by Olimex. This was another... Uh, project we did it's uh, we hacked a router and to, we added a serial port to be able to um, make any remote uh, installation so we were able to connect to this router and uh, with a serial communication then we had a, we were able to control any motors and sensor and send the data 